They're the first program in college basketball to 15 wins this year, and he's the head coach of them. It's Chris Mack of the Xavier Musketeers who joins us on Big East Shootaround. Coach, before we talk basketball, is it just simply my mistake that I thought you were the one decorating your house before Christmas? Uh, no, this is Tom Iser's office, our uh, trusty SID. I am not. Um, I don't. I don't decorate anything. My house, my office. Um, I leave that up to uh, guys like Tom, or uh, in, in the case of my house over Christmas, um, independent contractors. <laughs> How was Christmas morning in the Mac house? Very brief. We practiced uh, later on that afternoon, John. But uh, it was awesome. You know, we. Um, uh, you know, we had presents for the kids. Santa came, and we um, left out milk and cookies and some carrots for, obviously, the reindeer. And um, Great Christmas morning at the Mac House. Thanks for asking. Let's turn to your team now. And 15 wins, Coach. How has this team gotten to this point in the season? And, and as the number five team in America, how do you continue to evolve? Well, I think you evolve every single day in practice. You know, we, I think we have a, a ways to go. Uh, I think we um, played better against Butler than maybe we have uh, over the last uh, four or five games. Uh, I think offensively, uh, we took a lot uh, better care of the basketball. Uh, got some shots um, that um, we executed through our offense. Um, you know, and I, I think as we play better and better competition, you know, our, our offensive taking care of the ball and getting good shots keeps teams out of transition. Uh, defensively, you're able to set up your, uh, your defense in the half court. And uh, that, that's pretty much the recipe, I think, if you want to be successful. And it's easier said than done against some of the teams that we're playing, uh, the amount of pressure they bring. But I, I thought Butler, we took a, a step forward. And we're going to have to do that again on uh, Saturday against a, a very good Providence team. I've seen your 1-3-1 zone get broken out in bits and pieces here as the start of conference play is revved up. Where does that originate from? Really out of necessity. You know, a few years ago, we had Matt Stainbrook, who um, was an amazing offensive player. Uh, he struggled in ball screen defense situations where, uh, you know, other teams nowadays try to bring your center out on the floor. And, uh, you know, while, while centers are, are great around the basket, uh, they're not as good, you know, trying to move their feet against guards and all the problems that a ball screen situation presents. So, um, we really did it out of necessity, and we put our biggest player under the basket and, um, you know, tried to play some angles on the perimeter, and it sort of took a life of its own uh, about four years ago, and ever since then, we, we've, we've used it in bits and pieces. Last year's team wasn't as good at it, um, but this year's team is, um, has done a really good job uh, in our 1-3-1. One, one. Sitting in on your practice in the preseason, one thing that came to mind immediately was how physical – the practice was. Can you speak to the physicality you try to create there that you need to be able to pay off when conference play arrives and as it goes on? Well, we're playing in one of the most physical teams in the entire country in the Big East. And, you know, it's, it's always been a bruising league. It's very representative of East Coast. And, and so I feel like if, you, if you're going to be physical in the game and if you're not going to let the physicality come to you, um, you better bring it every single day in practice. And I, you know, Skip Prosser, who was a great mentor of mine and someone I worked closely with for a number of years, you know, always talked about iron sharpens iron. And I think if you have cushy practices and, and five on O and feel good practices, uh, while it might help in certain instances, I think over the long haul, it, it doesn't really help your team adjust to what the game's going to be like. And so, we want our practices to be competitive. Um, you know, there's a fine line because you, you're playing a game on Wednesday. Guys are bruised up and, and beat up by the time Thursday's practice comes around. So you, you have to be somewhat wise so you don't beat your team down through the course of a long conference season. But I think our guys, for the most part, um, are excited to come to practice. And I think that's what it's all about. There's so much that's known about this group with going to the Elite Eight a year ago and what Trayvon Blewett and J.P. Makura can do to beat teams. What are you still looking to learn about your team? Uh, well, I think anybody um, in our situation always wants to keep bringing along the younger guys. You know, I think Najee Marshall, uh, Paul Scruggs, Elias Harden, and, and Karim Canner to a certain um, respect because he, he's a first-year player for us, although he's 
probably the most mature and oldest player on our team. But those guys have to continue to evolve as players. You know, they, they have to bring things to the table uh, that can help our team. You know, in Najee and Paul's case, uh, they can be elite defenders. And part of being an elite defender is getting used to the, the actions that they're going to see, getting used to um, you know, different types of playing styles, um, the, the battles that they'll face, like guys like Andrew Rousey, you know, uh, Rodney Bullock, um, Cartwright, you name it. The list goes on and on. But I think those guys can really help us, John, as, as we get into conference play deeper and deeper. Before we let you go, a couple of fan questions here. The toughest sure. player you've coached? Wow. Um, you know, I would probably be um, doing a disservice to so many guys who put on the uniform and, and represented that Xavier toughness that um, that we've come to identify with. You know, guys like Jordan Crawford, uh, Two Holloway, uh, David West, those guys come to mind. I think J.P. McCura um, is one of the nastiest competitors uh, and toughest guys I've ever coached. But, um, you know, to single out one would probably m misrepresent a group of guys that have done some special things here at Xavier. That's a perfect segue because one fan asks, J.P. McCura, chase down block or parking lot three? Uh, I like to chase down block. And uh, the reason I say that, John, is because, you know, you don't always um, – you're not always in position to win a game with a shot, you know, and ever be the hero that maybe you grew up dreaming about. But it's plays like uh, the chase down block, diving on a loose ball, uh, setting a good screen that uh, sometimes go unnoticed uh, but win games. All right. What's your rating on this? What do we think? <laughs> well, I, I would say uh, I like the muscles. Uh, I love the hair. Uh, those are probably – the only two things I think the artist really you know, did right, to be quite honest. You know, I think uh, everything else is probably misproportioned. You know, shoe size, uh, the eyes look good, teeth are pretty white. Um, I, I got to say, probably, uh, I don't know if there's a better uh, bobblehead in the country than that one in terms of representation of a head coach. There may not be a team playing better in the country right now than the Xavier Musketeers. Coach Mack, good luck on Saturday against Providence. Thanks for having me, John.